the first screen. There's a launch screen that gives us simple one-step options to do what we came here to do. Either we can start a brand new chart, or we can convert a picture from somewhere into a chart. We can open a chart that we've worked on recently, or browse the computer that we're using to find some. This is a list of the files that I've used recently. There are some sample charts built into the program. No one will ever stitch them, but they have to be there. Let's start a new chart. There's a button for default settings, and when you first get the program, it says 200 by 200 design size. You're not stuck with that. You can choose a design size. So to keep things simple for the minute, I'm just going to choose a very small size. On 14 count, using square grid. Got a choice of cloth colors here, but I normally work on white anyway. So I'll click OK and off we go. Well, where we start is down the left hand side of the screen here. You can see there are some colors already for us to play with. This is what I call the default palette. You can make any colors you like appear here when you start the program. But for the moment, I'm just going to use the ones we've got. Imagine that we want to draw a couple of flowers. First thing I'll start with is a green color and then draw a stalk and a leaf. Now along the top, there are types of stitches and other things that we can do. Full stitches is where I want to start. So I've chosen green, full stitches, and then using the left mouse button on the grid, drag the mouse around. We'll make a yellow flower. And to do that a little quicker, I'm going to use the Shapes button and select Solid Ovals. You can see a different selection of shapes here, but Ovals is good enough to get us started for a flower. We can pop a um, bit in the middle. I did drag out a circle there, but at that kind of size, you can't really draw a circle with full stitches. So what we see is fairly blocky. Full stitches are all very well, but what about half stitches? We've got a number of those to play with. Over here, half stitches, four directions. So if I go back to yellow and say top left hand corner, I can fill in the edges like that. You might want to do the same with the leaves. Now looking at that, I know it was a green, not quite sure which green it was. If I want to continue drawing with the same color that I can see on screen, I press the space bar and that will activate this eyedropper tool at the top. Click on the green and it selects it for you in the palette automatically. So using that green and those half stitches, or these half stitches, The yellow flower could do with half stitches all the way around. Now, being a lazy sort of person, it would be nice if I could get the program to do that for me, and it can. I'll press the space bar and select yellow again, only this time, instead of drawing the half stitches individually, I'm going to use this magic wand tool up here to do automatic half stitch. And having selected that, if I click in the area, It adds half stitches every time three full stitches appear together. So what we got on screen is a very boring daisy. Um, and we're looking at that in solid colors. Later on, when we want to print that chart or export it to a PDF, we won't want to see it in color. Instead, we'll want to see it in symbols. You can see next to each of the colors over here, there is a symbol allocated. To see how the chart looks in symbols, you choose symbols from the lower toolbar. Or color symbols, or 
or symbols on a color background or as a stitched effect, tent effect, diamonds, round diamonds, pixel hubby, and it goes on. I'm going to zoom out a little now, and that's done up here where you can see 75%. I can either click left and right, or use the plus and minus keys on the keyboard, or drop down and pick a particular value directly off the screen. The reason I wanted to zoom out a little was because I want to duplicate this flower. And I can do that by selecting it, copying it, and then pasting. Now, if that's in the wrong place, I can use undo which is Control z on the keyboard, or this life belt on the toolbar, like that. What I actually want to do is to have this flower, but backwards. So I'm going to choose Select. And instead of an immediate copy, I'll go down this rather long list of things what you can do with something you've just selected. And from that, I'll choose Flip This Area left and right. And now we have some dancing flowers. You probably saw other options in that. What I'm going to do is to insert a couple of rows just underneath the, um, the top of the flower. See, having selected three rows, I can either delete them or insert three gaps. And that can move things around and give you a bit more space to draw. And again, undo will undo if you need to. Going back to symbols, at the moment, you can see that the yellow color is using a triangular symbol. That's this one down here. Now, if we don't like that symbol, we click the symbol at the bottom of the screen and there's a list of other symbols that we might use instead. Because it's quite light in colour, we could probably do with a light symbol. So I'm going to use this colon, click OK, and it'll change like that. The pink areas show you which symbols have already been used. And the bluey purple color shows you the one that's active for the color that you're about to make an amendment for. If you have a particular preference, if you want to use, for example, a heart every time you use DMC 3727, you select the heart and then tick this button at the bottom to say use this as a preferred symbol for this thread. It'll remember that and try to use that symbol for that color in any chart that you create from that point onwards. 